Hello everyone, welcome back to part 2 of the Census Battle episode of Backtracking. I apologise, well I don't apologise for the delay because I told you it was going to come. Uh, I really couldn't get on the laptop, well I couldn't get on the laptop yesterday, I just couldn't get on the internet until about 11pm. And lord knows I'm not doing another video at 11pm. I've done late night videos before I'm sure, I just, I don't want to do one again. Not really, and uh, yeah I apologise for the slight delay like today. Like, I was supposed to make this 10 minutes earlier, but... Uh, the, you know, my Facebook just decided to be a bit of a dick, so I had to turn things off turn it off again, it's all fine now. We're gonna jump right back into part two, so let's do that. So we continue from yesterday's episode, uh, with the band's fifth album, Rense, released in 2013 through Staple Records, and this time produced by Sean Lopez. There are some interesting things about this album before I talk about how much I like it, and trust me, I do like this album quite a lot. So this is the band's first and only release through the staple label, as well as their last to include Dan Chapter as a drummer before his departure in late 2014. Also, and I think that this is a backtracking first, this album is 43 minutes and 4 seconds long, the exact same amount of length as their debut. Kind of think that I covered this album first for part 2 and their debut first for part 1 because I go in chronological order like a sensible human being. Not normal, sensible. Also, despite Jason Black being a full-time member of the band by this point, he wasn't available to record bass due to obligations with his other band named Hot Water Music, so guitarist Zach Roach had stepped in on four string. So, I mentioned that, this like it, that I like this album, didn't I? I kinda lied. You see, I fucking love this album. I mean, for those who haven't figured it out, Renaissance is Spanish for rebirth, and considering the new direction of sound that this album takes, yeah, it's clear that the band live up to that name. I said it before, but 2013 was the year where I started to experiment more in the music that I listened to, and this album is one of those reasons why. It sort of shakes away the emo sound of old, it's still trading in post-hardcore, metalcore, melodic hardcore, and even some shoegazing elements, and it all matches together surprisingly well. You wouldn't expect metalcore and shoegazing to sound so good together, but since it's fell and Hunter have taught me anything is that it does work. For some weird reason, it just works. Anyway, this album structuring and balance is so damn on point with everything uh, building up to great choruses and great balances, screams and singing and awesome riffs. Sure, there's not many solos, but it's still a damn good album. Even though it's probably the band's heaviest release, it's also their most positive editing, with Buddy singing more about true love and, whilst not necessarily faith in a particular deity, he has more faith in himself. He sings and screams and writes like he's a changed man, because he is a changed man. Hell, he actually sounds like he could sing while still keeping his passion behind his voice, which is not easy to pull off. Zach Roach and Matt Smith, not the Doctor Who actor, both put in awesome riffs that pair relentlessly and triple along nicely, with Zach in throwing some good bass work too, which just hammers nice and deep, and Dan's drumming remains a standout with awesome timing, rhythm, speed, and backbone. Also, it's getting dark, uh, sort of. Uh, yeah. Okay, standout songs include Neo Moore, Canine, Snakebite, The Path, and my favourite from the closer Between the Mountains and the Sea. Renaissance is the fire that the band needed to their collective assets, combining strong songwriting, heavy riffs, great production and passion, with, and a surprising amount of positivity and heart. I can definitely definitely recommend this one, no questions asked. I mean, it is one of my favourite albums of 2013, so there you go. And if certain other albums weren't released as well, this would have been number one, I feel. So, yeah. Slight lighting change, woo. Yeah, uh, next is the band's sixth album, Pull the Thorns From Your Heart, released in 2015 through the band's new label of Pure Noise and produced again by Sean Lopez. The lineup once again changes. It's the last album to feature guitarists Zach Roach and Matt Smith, and the first to feature new bassist Gavin Caswell and new drummer Chris Hornbrook. It's also the band's shortest album at 40 minutes and 15 seconds. I don't really have many facts to say about this one except for what I already brought up, and for those who saw my top 10 albums of 2015 that I had to post on Facebook because I didn't really have proper internet access so I didn't want to film videos, this was one of those albums and I'm going to try and not repeat myself too much in my praise of the album for it deserves much praise. It still has the positive factor of Renaissance, but it's more accepting of the spiritual elements that that album touched upon, not to mention that it features Buddy as most open and honest lyrically. He sounds more relieved than ever to have let all of his past demons out, Taking more, uh, talking more about his addiction to not just alcohol and self harm, but sex. I remember reading an article where he talked about it, having grown so addicted to that kind of release that he once hired a transsexual prostitute just so that he could have sex, and I'm not making that up. But as evidenced by the article, Buddy has a more body, Buddy has a more positive outlook on life, and it shows more in his lyrics. Uh, this album seems more focused on messages for himself as opposed to being more for the listener like last time. But it's not done in a way that makes him seem egotistical. In fact, the balance between band members is well paced and leads to great structuring in songs, with some very fast and heavy moments at some points, and more of a focus on ambience at times. Hell, there's even spoken word poetry, which, whilst not a first for Buddy personally, it is a first for a sense of spell album. 
He speaks about his dealings with life and depression and love in such an oddly inspiring way, letting us know that, sure, he had a bad life, but he's still where he is and he's not afraid to let that show. His vocals sound a lot better as well, adding more higher singing with some surprising range. Uh, the heavier rhythm on the melodic guitar moments of Roger and Smith sound amazing and are really well balanced. Gavin's bass work is good for his first outing with the fans, with nice showmanship and a good drive and jerks of things. And Chris is a great drum, adding more spin to technicality. And as much as I love that trap, Hornbrook definitely deserves a lot of credit too. Standout songs include the title track, Take Refuge, The Importance of the Mount of Death, The Courage of an Open Heart, and My Favourite in Wounds. Combining a heavier sound with the same elements from Red Surf, Senses Fell gave us another solid piece of work, sounding in the most vulnerable and still positive, with the addition of great production and awesome lyrics, and I can recommend this one. And finally, we reach the band's seventh album, If There Is Light, It Will Find You. Released in 2018, uh, again, via Pure Noise and Producers, it's signed by Bob Burchell. If There Is Light does feature some more lineup changes. Gavin Castle stays but takes over with guitar duties. Our new bassist is Greg Stiliardis, I can only hope I'm saying that correctly. And we have another new guitarist in Jason Milbank. And even though Chris Hornbrook stayed around for this album, he has left the band as of a couple of weeks ago, I think, and has been replaced by Steve Carey, so there's that. Not related to Drew or Jim, who aren't related anyway, so it doesn't make sense. Anyway, this album is probably the most pop punk sounding album that the band has ever put out, and considering that's a pop punk album on the Pure Noise label, you know you're going to get good things from it, but let's focus on something else for now before talking about that. This album is a total departure from the more metalcore slash melodic hardcore stylings of their previous two efforts, instead focusing on the light side of things, which is kind of surprising considering that the lyrics are pretty sad at times. In fact, I think that due to the change in sound, everything sounds more emotional as a byproduct of that, but it lyrics are always detailed personal experiences, and we all already knew that. But considering that in three years before the album came out, Buddy lost friends to drug addiction and suicide, started questioning his passion for what he does, and in what is possibly the album's main theme, losing a child to a miscarriage, almost losing his wife during that pregnancy, and almost losing his second child during the second pregnancy. Buddy really, really, really doesn't have it easy sometimes. I mean, if you look, if you thought the lyrics were any indication, then you should look at the album's cover art, which features an admittedly adorable-looking caricature of the Grim Reaper holding a baby girl, which I can only assume is Buddy's not actually dead daughter. But it's weird because that's supposed to represent the miscarriage that happened in Buddy's life. Strange. Still, back to the album. Uh, no more sadness. The structuring is handled well, and, it's, and whilst it's the most pop punk that the band have ever sounded, there's no shortage of emotional hardcore moments with some great screens thrown in with heavier instruments that are still pretty, really well balanced out. There's even some solos once again, which sounds pretty nice. Buddy still sounds passionate as well, heck, with his look conveying more of his messages in a way that is pretentious and is brought across really well. Jason and Gavin's guitar work is great, with the form showing off some good solos and wrists from both men. Greg's bass work is awesome for his first time with the band, with Go Town and Drive, and Chris's drumming is also good despite it being his last album, but getting a good performance and work rate of balance and speed. Standout songs include First Breath, Last Breath, Double Cross, Gold Jacket, Green Jacket, Shaking Hands, and my favourite in the closing title track. If there's light, it will find you. Brings across a strong message in its title, lyrics, and cover art, and mixes a new sound with old stuff while still sounding fresh as well as brilliantly produced. I can recommend this one easily. So let's round these babies up. My most favorite, my most favorite, is uh, probably Rent's uh, heavier sound, more memorable, more positive, and faster production value and lyrics. It's just really hard not to look for me. Hell, if uh, like I said earlier, if certain albums weren't released in 2013, that would have been my album of the year without a doubt. Least favourite album is The Fire. I do still like it a lot, and it does hold a place in my heart for being my first Insist Fail album from front to back, but it feels a little bit too safe at times. It's still strong in terms of songwriting and production and such, but by that point it was nothing that people weren't familiar with already by the band. Anyway, that will about wrap it up for the episode. Join me next time, uh, well, join me in my next backtracking episode, which will probably be released on Tuesday, for in, for in California, even though I won't be there, I'm just talking about a band from there. I'll cover another band I really love in Let Live. I could have just said that from the start and saved you a lot of pain. And also, uh, I'll see you before then, if I can find a way to find the next UFC event on the new Skybox we have. Ugh, pray for me. Anyway, as always, thank you for listening. You're awesome. Bye. 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 Bye.